Okay. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, what I want to do is explore a lot of this stuff tonight with a particular example. Specifically, I want to look at um, this example, and I want to compute the capacity of the non-composite section, and I want to do it in positive bending. Now, if I'm doing it in positive bending, I'm talking about essentially, you know, this region in here. And what we found from our previous analysis is that no matter where we're looking at in this general vicinity, we know two things. We know that the unbraced length, the cross frame spacing, is 20 feet, right? And we know that CB is 1. So it's going to make our life a little easier. Um, with that, I'm going to start negotiating through the spec uh, and, and working towards this. So what I want you all to do is sort of follow along with me in the notes and in the spec. Make sure that you see what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And we'll go through and we'll, we'll calculate a lot of this. Now before I start doing all this uh, hardcore math, let me pull something up real quick. Excuse me. <coughs> all right. So if you recall, I'm going to go back to this. This is our positive bending region calcs. And specifically, I want to look at this right here. These are the section properties associated with the non-composite section. And I'm going to use these pretty heavily. So let me copy and paste this right here. So let me do a screen capture. Where'd it go? There we go. Oh. Squinch that up a little bit. Maybe I can make that a little larger. That's probably good enough. Can y'all read that? Okay. And close that. So this is we're gonna end up using appendix A. But our main goal is non-composite capacity. Okay. Now, we've got a number of section properties here that are going to make our life uh, a little easier. So we've got um, the, uh, the, all the uh, uh, moments of inertia calculations right here. We've got section moduli for the top and bottom. Now we're looking in a region of positive bending, okay? So which is the compression flange, the top flange or the bottom flange? If you're in positive bending, which flange is seeing compression, the top or the bottom? Top flange, okay. So when I write the following dimensions and I say BFC is 14 and T FC is 3 quarters and D is 42 inches, T is 7 sixteenths and so on. Let me go ahead and finish this. B, F, T, 16, T, F, T is 1 and a quarter. Notice what I'm doing. I'm saying the top flange, the 14 by 3 quarters, that's the one in compression. So I'm saying B sub F C, T sub F C, so on and so forth. Sound good? All right. Now, while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and determine if a6 even applies. Okay? You can't use A6, you can't treat the section as a beam if the behavior doesn't fit. Okay? So, what do we have? Well, we've got a number of limits. First off, the skew has to be less than or equal to 20 degrees. Is that limit met? What is the skew for this bridge? 
Does it have any skew at all? Huh? There we go. Because the actual skew is zero, right? If it had skew, you know, the girders would look something like this. You know, it would have some angle associated with it. And whatever that angle is, that would be the skew. There's no skew, right? Okay? We have to use a flange stress less than or equal to 70 KSI, which we've met that because all the flanges have stresses that are, or yield stresses that are 50 KSI. That's simple, okay? We have to meet the following limit, 2D sub C over TW has to be less than or equal to 5.7 square root of E over FYC. Okay. Now, we should know everything that goes into that except for D sub C. We've got to talk a little bit about that. We're looking at the non-composite capacity. Okay. So, I want to look at the girder by itself. So, maybe I ought to draw that as a plate grid. So here's the girder, right? Let's say that's the centroid. So that distance is going to be Y bar, which I propose that 17.993 inches. Okay? Everybody see where I'm getting that? I'm getting that right there. <coughs> Sound good? Now, what is... What is this distance right here, from here to here? Well, I propose it's D plus that bottom flange thickness. Sound good? What does that make this distance? There you go. Which it's also the depth of the web in compression. Remember, everything above the centroid is in compression. Everything below it's in tension. So I need that distance right there. That's the depth of the web in compression. So I take D plus that uh, thickness minus Y bar. So what do I got? I got DC is 42 inches plus 1 and a quarter minus 17.993. So D sub C comes out to be 25.257, something about like that. Sound good? Simple, right? So, if I go through and evaluate this limit, what do I have? I've got 2 times 25.257. Can you all read that? Is that legible enough? Okay. Over 7 sixteenths. That's got to be less than or equal to 5.7 times. What's the square root of E? Or uh, square root of what's E? What's E for steel? That's a number, 29,000. That's a number I'm going to burn into your memory when this is all said and done. E4 steel is 29,000 KSI. It's always a constant. That's Young's modulus. FY, that's the yield stress. That's 50. So, over here on the left, we have our web slenderness. This, keep in mind, this is a measure of web slenderness, and we're trying to determine if the web slenderness is less than a given value. So we're trying to determine if we've got a stocky enough web, you know, a compact enough web. That's what we're trying to determine here. So on the left, if I take 2 times 25, that's about 50-something, divided by 0.4375, go through, do the math, plug and chug, I got 115.5. Five, something about like that. It's less than or equal to five point. Yes. 
Because it's the, that's a good question. The reason why is because it's the depth of the web in compression. So when I'm looking at the part of the web that's in compression, I'm only looking at this. Because that's the part of the web that's in compression. So that's all I care about. That's a good question. Everybody okay with that? All right. Now when I go through and do all this on the uh, right, I get 5.7 times the square root of 29,000 over 50. If you plug and chug, you should get something like 137.3. So, have we met that? Darn tootin', right? Last one, we have to calculate IYC over IYT. And that has to be greater than 0 0.3. So I'm going to have you all do a little bit of math with me, just so you all are awake and fired up. All right, so IYC, that's the moment of inertia of that flange this way, okay? So that's the thickness times the width cubed over 12. So that's, uh, what was that? Three quarters, 14 cubed over 12, and what do we get? I think y'all do a little bit of grunt work tonight. Say it again. And IYT is going to be something similar. So that's what, one and a quarter? Times 16 over 12. So 1.25 times 16 cubed over 12. Well, say, say it again. 85.33. So if I calculate IYC over IYT, I'm going to get 171.5 inches to the fourth over 85.33. Wait, 85.33? Here, hold, hold on, let me let me check some that. What's that? Let me see. Sixteen cubed, one point two five times. Say it again. Four twenty six point six seven. Is is that what you're getting? Okay, I was about to say that that didn't make sense because the flange is bigger, you know. So 16 and then 3 raised 1.25 times 12 flat. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay. Remember, you're cubing that 16. Now, if you go through and do that ratio, I'm getting, what are you getting? 0 0.4? Yeah, something like that. We'll say 0.4 because all we got to know is, is it bigger than 0 0.3? Is that good? Looks good, right? So what that told us is that we can actually use Appendix A. Sound good? All right. So what I'll say is, therefore, Appendix A is applicable. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, before we go through and you know, go through the PowerPoint and do some uh, calcs, there's a couple other things I need to write down just so that we all are, are clear on where I start 
pulling values from. So I'm going to list some elastic section properties. And then later I'm going to list some plastic ones, which we're going to have to compute. Now, I need the section modulus for the compression flange and the tension flange. Remember, the compression flange is the one on the top, the tension flange is the one on the bottom. Now if I go up here and scroll up, I have the section modulus for the top flange as being about 614 and for the bottom flange being about 887. Sound good? So 614.01, 887.49. What are the units for a section modulus? Should be inches to the third. There you go. Sound good, right? Now, because we're looking at a non-composite girder, we can just compute the yield moment as saying Fy times Sx. If we're looking at a composite girder, that's where we've got to do that stage construction and say this is how much stress goes on the non-composite, this is how much goes on long term, this is how much goes on short term, and et cetera. Since we're looking at a steel shape by itself, I can get MYC is FY times the section modulus, which is 50 KSI times 617.01. Simple. I'm getting three zero seven hundred point uh, six. What's that? Oh, six one four. So. There we go. Is the other one right? You got 0.5? That's close enough. Now that's going to be in inch kits, right? I'm tracking decimals, so I, I imagine that I'm going to have a decimal or two off from you all. That's all right. Now that's in inch kips. How would I get that into foot kips? What would I do? Multiply by 12 or divide by 12? Divide by 12. If you go through and do that, you should get 25, there you go, 28, uh, 25, or 58, sorry, 25, 58, uh, 0.4. Sound good? That's close enough for government work. Sound good? All right. For the tension flange, we get... Fifty KSI, eight eighty-seven cubic inches. Uh, there we go. Forty-four three seven four point seven something like that. And I'm going to round it here in a second because I'm going to say divide by twelve. And I, if you divide by 12, what do you get? I got 36. So like 0.9. So if I round, just say 0.9. I mean, yeah, at that point it doesn't matter, yeah. And keep in mind, if we're talking about decimals, that's one of the beauties of Excel. You can just track all that, that all those calculations. You don't have to go through and, and do all this. We're just sort of scratching out the calc so that we understand what's going on. Sound good? All right. Now, just so we're clear, this is the yield moment for the compression flange. This is the yield moment for the tension flange. If the spec asks for just MY, which one do I use? This one or that one? Top one or the bottom? Top, yeah. Anytime we're using MY, just use the minimum. Okay? Sound good? Now,
That's that. We're also going to need some plastic section properties. Okay. Now, by plastic section properties, I mean two things. We're going to need MP and we're going to need DCP, the depth of the web and compression at MP. I can hear it right now. You're probably thinking to yourself, wait a minute, didn't we already do that? Didn't we go back and say, I mean, if I go back a few slides, didn't we already do MP? Remember this? where we did the, the case one and case two and did all that. Didn't we already do MP? I can hear it now. You're like, yeah, we already did that. Here's the problem. Right there. What does that say? MP for the composite beam. We're looking at the non-composite beam. So this does not apply at all. We got to do it again. Um, luckily, the math gets a little easier for us. All right. Since we don't have a slab component to deal with, you'll see this gets real easy real quick. All right. Now I'm all, I'm going to walk us through some of it and then we'll go back to appendix D and make sure we know where a lot of this stuff's coming from. So we calculate our plastic forces, which is FYC, BFC, TFC. So that's 50 KSI then 14, 3 quarters, then we calculate PW, a lot of this is going to be repetitive because you've done this before, subscript. Remember doing this where we calculate the plastic forces of each component? So here's P sub C, P sub W, and P sub T. Remember we had a P sub S. We had a 0.85 FC prime times the area of the slab. We're not doing that this time because we're not looking at the slab. It's non-composite. So y'all got some numbers for me? There we go, 525. And this one is 1,000. Those are kits. Sound good? Now, if it's been a while and you're like, where the heck is he coming up with all this? I'm in Appendix D, which, uh, let's see. Remember all this? Where we say, all right, we got to figure out whether we're in case one, case two, case three. Now we're talking about positive bending. Here's the nice thing. Since we're talking about a girder uh, in positive bending and we don't have a slab, we're really only dealing with case one or case two. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I think it would probably be pretty strange if it was in the top flange. It's probably going to be in the web. Okay. So if it's in the web, here's Y bar, here's MP. Sound good? Let's check it out. Here's our condition, right? And really, we're only looking at this component because, you know, think, that zero, that zero, and that zero, right? So all we got to figure out is if P sub T plus P sub W is greater than P sub C. Um, come on. Full screen. So case one, P sub T plus P sub W has got to be greater than P sub C. So that's what, um, I mean, this has got to be greater than or equal to 1,000 kips. 
And I can just tell you by observation that that's going to be the case. What do we got? 14, 43.75. Did I do that backwards? Oh, I did. I, I did do that backwards. Yep, that's 525. And this is 1918.75. I did that backwards. So, case one governs. And that means that the PNA is in. The web. All right. If that's the case, how do I calculate y bar? Well, I plug and chug, and it ends up being this. D over 2, PT, oh, minus, minus PC, over PW plus 1, which is oh, I got PT minus PC, so 1,000 tips minus 525 tips. Plus 1. Not too bad, right? There we go, 31.857. All right. Everybody okay with this? Now, before we go through and do anything else, um, I'll give you all a second to write this down. Y'all need a second? Okay. All right. Um, there we go. All right. So here's where I got that, you know, D over 2 times all of this, and PS, PRT, and PRB set to 0, so you can see where I got that. But what is Y bar? It's where the plastic neutral axis is. And for case 1, you can see how that's measured, right? Look at this. This is the top flange, that's the web, and that's the bottom flange. So. You know, just so I can color this in and make sense, that's the top flange. Same thing right here, that's the top flange. So from the top flange measured down, that's Y bar. Okay? Can anybody tell me something else about Y bar? What is Y bar also going to be equal to in this case? DCP. There we go. This is DCP. The depth of the web in compression at the plastic moment. So that term is going to be DCP. So for our calc, DCP is going to be what? 31 point whatever it was, 85, something like that? That's, that's DCP. All right. Sound good? All right. Now, I just wanted to have that make, you know, make sense. Okay. Okay. Now, that's what Y bar is. It's also going to help us out for DCP. Um, to calculate MP, plug and chug. Um, we know everything going on over here. That's simple. The only thing we don't know are these little D distances, right? And remember what those are. They're the distance from the PNA to the centroid of each shape, right? Anybody remember that? Okay. So let's figure that out. Let's make sure we're clear on that. So here's our section. And there's the PNA. And this distance is Y bar. So let me ask you a question. How would I get from the PNA? to right there. In other words, from the PNA to the center of that flange. How do I get there? Well, I propose we go Y bar and then how far? 
Well, no, no, no. We're not, keep in mind, the concrete, we're not talking about the concrete at all. So the haunch isn't there. Half the top flange thickness. There you go. So D sub C is Y bar plus half that. Um, what was that? Three quarters? Inches. Plug and chug, and that'll give you 32.232. Right? Sound good? Now, let me ask you a question. Excuse me. If this is Y bar, what is this distance right here? In other words, if that's Y bar, what's that? I propose it's D minus Y bar, right? So if I want D sub T, the distance to the center of this flange, I propose it's D minus Y bar plus half that flange thickness. So 42 minus 31.857 plus one and a quarter over two. Plug and chug. Ten point seven six eight. Everybody okay with that? All right. Our plastic moment calc should be pretty straightforward then. All right. So what do we got? We got P W over two D. Y bar squared plus D minus Y bar squared plus PC DC PT DT. Sound good? Is everybody seeing where I'm getting that? Appendix D. So plug and chug. Let's see. This is 918.75. 2 over 42 inches. So 31.857 inches squared plus 42 minus 31.857 I got backwards. Plus and then so we got 525 kips times D sub C is 32.232 Plus a thousand ten point seven six eight. Ooh, right? Hold hang in there with me. We'll get there. Now, when I plug and chug this. I get 33, or no, let me do the inch kits. If you take these numbers, plug and chug, you will get 39915.2. And the units are going to be inch kits. Now if I convert that to feet kits, divide by 12, I get the following. 
Sound good? So I propose that MP is 33, 26.3 foot kips, and DCP is 31.857 inches. Any questions? I know it's long, but this should be pretty road, pretty plug and shut. Everybody good? All right. Now, before we start digging into the spec, um, I'm going to add another step, and I'm going to call it remaining properties. Okay. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when you all do your spreadsheet and whatnot, you're going to want to go ahead and set it up to do a lot of these calcs for you. Now, I'm going to be honest. For instance, we're going to calculate a J, but when you go through and do this example, we won't use J. You don't know that, though, when you set up a spreadsheet, so you need to know how to calculate everything. So we're going to go ahead and calculate it all. All right? So. I'm going to sort of run through the ones that I know that we can compute right now. So I'm going to start off with R sub T. Now R sub T is a radius of gyration that we're going to use for LTB. All right? And it is the following. On the bottom, the square root of 12 times 1 plus a fraction, it's DCTW over 3 compression flange width, compression flange thickness. And that's all under BFC. So, let's see. 12 times, actually let me put a bracket on that, excuse me, 3 times, compression flange width is 14 inches and it's 3 quarters of an inch thick and then on the top we've got D sub C which came out to be, if y'all remember what that was, D sub C, it was a little earlier. What? 32.2? Well, why do I have something different? Hold on. Now, I've got this right here. The, Where'd you get, you got 32, oh, 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 you're talking about this one. You're talking about that one right there. That was for the plastic moment, and I can see where that would be confusing. I'm talking about for the, the like the elastic, where you have the section moduli and the moment of inertia. I'm talking about from, you know, the centroid to the way tippy, tippy top of the web, and that one's this one right here. So I can see where that would be confusing. I apologize if that, that confu uh, was confusing a little bit. I got, yeah, so. I got this one that's the 25.257 times the web thickness. Now that's 7 sixteenths. All right, so a bracket around that. And get rid of all that. And then all that's under 14 inches. I'm going to see if you all can come up with an answer on this, but I want to make sure you're feeling comfortable with the math. First off, let's see what the units would come out to be, and what are the units going to come out to be? I mean, all this stuff down here, it's inches times inches over inches times inches. It all cancels out. So the units are that, inches. There you go, 3.477.
There you go. All right. We're going to calculate a reduced yield stress. Now, the formula is the maximum of the minimum of 0 0.7 RH FYT times, actually, let me move that down a little bit. And then SXT over SXC. comma F Y W. Take the minimum of all that and then it's the maximum of whatever you get there in 0 0.5 F Y C. So what this is trying to account for is all of those uh, or all of those residual stresses that you get in the I beam from when you weld it. Okay? Now here's the thing. All the yield stresses are equal. They're all equal. And you can go through and follow it. If you set your hybrid girder factor equal to 1, now we're setting this equal to 1 because it's not hybrid. It's, it's a homogeneous section. They're all 50. Okay? So if we set this equal to 1 and you set all the FYs equal to one another, I, I promise you this comes out to be 0.7 FY. So this is 0.7 times 50 KSI and it's 35. And if you don't believe me, you can go through and track it out. So, you know, 0.7 times Fy, uh, Fy times that, and then this, it'll go through and chug out, I promise. All right. Sound good? All right. Next one. Did I lose my count? Oh, oh there we go. Next one, J. Now, J is dt cubed over 3, essentially, for all the components, plus a little correction factor. All right. So we'll take our time with it. So this is 42 times 7 sixteenths over 3 plus 14 inches, 3 quarter inches cubed over 3, 1 minus 0 0.63. Three quarter inches over sixteen in, or fourteen. Plus Oh, I'm repeating myself. Don't forget my cubed over three. 1 minus 0 0.63, 1 and a quarter over 16. All right. Now, J, just so you're aware, J is that torsional constant. Remember, if I take that I-beam and I twist it, it's the relationship between how much torque I apply and how much it rotates. That and G, your shear modulus. Now, if you go through and chug all that out, Plug and chug, you should get uh, 
I'll go ahead and write it out. I want to see if everybody's getting that. 12.979. Now, just curious, what are the units going to be? Inches to the, go ahead, fourth, there we go. Good? There you go. All right. Next one, this is simple. This is H. Now H, all H is is the distance from the center of the top flange to the center of the bottom flange, and it's a real simple calc. It's just half the flange thickness plus the depth plus half the other flange thickness. So TFC over 2 plus D plus TFT over 2. So 3 quarter inches over 2 plus 42 inches plus 7 sixteenths over 2. And you should get 43. Did that come out exactly 43? I think so. Does that come out 43? What did you all get? Forty-two point five. Yeah, I'm. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Thirty-five plus forty-two point five nine. Yeah, maybe it was just rounding or something. I don't know. Yeah, I got forty-two point five nine too. Forty-two point five nine also. All right. All right. Sound good? Okay. All right. Let's see, what else can we compute? All right. All right. We can go ahead and compute some of our anchor points, our LTB anchor points. So, let's see, what do we got? We got LP, which is 1.0 RT square root of E over FYC which is 1.0 times RT, which was 3.477 inches times the square root of E. What is E? There we go, 29,000 KSI over 50. Now, one thing I do want to illustrate when you calculate this out, what do the units come out to be in? Inches. Okay. So if you chug this out, you're going to get 83, yeah, point like 74 or something like that, inches, right? Or an L sub P of 6.98 feet. Okay. So. Make sure that you know you're aware that your um, your L sub P and your L sub R, which we're going to do here in a second, is in inches and feet. All right, sound good? Now I won't lie to you. This next one is probably the nastiest one of them all. But hey, we'll get through it and we'll be done. All right, it'll be done and over with. Nastiest one, done and over. So L R equals. 1.95 RT E over FYR times J over SXC H times the square root of 1, whoop, 1 plus the square root of, I'm not making that up, 1 plus 6.76 times a quantity squared. That quantity is FYR, SXCH over EJ. 
quantity squared. I did not make a mistake there. There actually is two square roots, a square root within a square root. All right, let's do it. So 1.95 times RT 3.477 inches times what? 29,000 KSI. I'm going to burn that number into your memory by the time we are done. Over FYR, which we already did that one earlier, and that was 35. Okay? Sound good? All right. So, now SXC, that was, what, 614.01, something like that? Then H was 42.59. J, 12.979. All right. One plus. Okay. One plus. 6.76, a fraction. That fraction is 35 KSI. SXC is 614.01 inches cubed. H is 42.59 inches. On the bottom is E, 29,000. J is 12.979 inches to the fourth. Now, that fraction is squared, and then there we go. I know, it's a beautiful equation, isn't it? I'm just taking a break from writing it. Let me make sure I got it down right. Yep, I did. Whew. Can you take Say it again. 366, six, okay. Mine's a little lower. Three thirty-six. Okay, I got th yeah. I got three. Here's what I got. I got three forty point two six. Now there's probably going to be some rounding or whatnot here and there. Okay. Now what are the units? It comes in inches because think about think. I mean I know that this is a massive count, but look what happens. Take a look here. KSI versus KSI, they cancel. Inches to the fourth over inches cubed times inches. Everything cancels. What about in here? Inches cubed times inches, inches to the fourth, that cancels KSI, KSI. The only thing left is that one right there, which is in inches. Okay? Now, LR, if we rewrite it by dividing by 12, is 28.36 feet. Now, if you took steel design, you probably never calculated these because LP and LR, you just look them up. There's a, a table in the steel manual called the ZX tables, and LP and LR are just there. The reason why is because they're nasty to calculate, and the spec does it for you. We don't have that luxury when we're doing a plate girder because we're changing the flanges and the webs to whatever we want, so we have to go through and do it. But the nice thing is once you set it up in a spreadsheet once, it's over. Sound good? All right, let's see, what else can we go ahead and compute right now? Okay. <coughs> All right, we can compute lambda sub w, which is 2 dc over tw, 
which is 2 times, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, this is still at 25.257 inches over 7 sixteenths, 115.46. Almost seems kind of melodramatic doing that calc after that massive one we just did, right? It's like, we need more. Okay, I, I got more. Oh, this isn't so bad. All right. Lambda RW, 5.7, E over FYC, which we actually kind of already computed something like this when we did our Appendix A check. And that came out to be like 137.27. Okay, a few more and then we can actually start making some decisions. Promise, we're going to get there. You're like, oh my God, will this ever end? All right. Okay. We've got land of PW at DCP, which is the minimum of the following. All right. On the bottom, 0 0.54 MP over RH MY minus 0 0.09 squared or lambda RW DCP over DC. Okay. You're probably like, just when will this end? I promise it ends very, very soon, and we're going to be able to make some points very quickly. All right. So, all right. So, Zero point five four times. Well, here, I'll just do it like this. Times. Now, MP, we did MP a little earlier, and we got what? Thirty three twenty six point three foot kits. Now, what's RH? One. So all we need is MY, and remember, whenever you're using MY, and which one do you use? You use the smaller one. So MYC versus MYT, that's the 2558.4. Minus 0 0.09. We take that quantity and we square it. And all that is under the square root of 29,050. And it's the minimum of that for D sub C, 25.257. And then D sub CP, 31.857. Yep.
I'm going to save you a little bit of agony. That comes out to be 64.284. I'll be completely honest with you. I don't remember if it's this one or that one. If I had to guess, well, no way, it's this one because this one's going to come out larger than the 137. So it's all of that. All right. Hanging in there with me? We're almost there. Almost there. Now, this can get a little confusing on the notation. This was lambda PW at DCP. We have to also calculate lambda PW at DC. And it's a simple one. So that's the minimum of 64.284 and then 25.257 over 31.857 and whatever this other one was, it was like 137. 274. Plug and chug and you get 50.966. Okay. All right. A couple more. So now we've got, tell you, tell you what I'm going to do since, since you've been troopers. I'm going to calculate a few more and then that homework that's due on November 1st, let's just make it due on November 8th. I ain't going to have time to finish through this anyways. Is that okay? I'm a reasonable guy. So, oh goodness. Lambda F, BFC over 2 TFC, so that's 14 inches over 2 times 3 quarters. That comes out to be 9.333. Now, <coughs> I have to calculate a, a, a plate buckling coefficient, and it's pretty simple because it's just... Uh, KC is 4 over the square root of D over TW. So it's 4 divided by the square root of, was it 42 inches over 7 sixteenths. Now if you plug and chug, you'll get 0 0.408. And what I'll do is I'll put a little arrow here and I'll say that number has to be between 0 0.35 and 0 0.76. Okay, sound good? All right, two more and I promise they're really simple. They're like, you're making a lot of promises tonight and you're putting us through the ringer. I'm just saying. I can just see your course evals just going down. I've got jokes even this late. 0 0.38 square root of E over FYC, 0 0.38 square root 29,000 KSI over 50 KSI, 9.152 lambda sub rf, which is 0 0.95. Um, 
I think this software might be cutting out on me because I've written so much. How about, do you think? And I calculated this to be 0 0.408 over 35 KSI. Plug and chug and you get 17.472. Now, after that marathon series of counts, you're probably wondering just what in the hell was the point of all of that? Let me explain. Do um, you need me to leave this up for a second or are you all good? Okay. Here, here's the reason. Okay. Um, let me go back to this. No more writing, just a couple comments and then we'll call it. All right, I want to go back to this, just so you all understand, okay? You all who took steel design used this little thing called a steel manual, okay? Now, the thing about the steel manual is that it does a lot of calculations for you that you might not be aware of. Now you're aware of them, okay? All that stuff that we just calculated is stuff that the steel manual does for you. Now, we don't get that luxury when we're dealing with a bridge because we're not dealing with rolled shapes that come from the manufacturer and we just tabulate the values. We're changing the, the properties of the flanges and the webs. And all that. We have to go through and grunt all this out. Now, the point of this exercise tonight is you all have seen the formulas, you've written them down, and you've exercised them. And you have a sample set of data to go off of. So you all should be able to build a spreadsheet that computes all of these properties. Why is that important? Well, here's why it's important. Okay, If I go to Appendix A and I say, all right, let's compute the web classification factor. Here it is, right? If your slenderness is less than or equal to this value, there it is. If it's greater than or equal to, there it is. You, that's really not so bad considering we just got through calculating all the crap that goes into this, right? We calculated this and this and that and that and the land of some PWDCP. And if we go to FYR, we've already gotten all that. Here's our flange local buckling expression. We've already calculated all of that. What we did is we set up all the grunt calcs that we did earlier so that next week we can come back and sort of close this section out. So that homework that I have here that says it's due November 1st, let's just push it back and say it's due November 8th because we didn't even finish going through the capacity check anyways. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I would go through and set up a spreadsheet that could compute all this automatically. You've got some data to go off of. The idea is if you change a property, it'll go through and update all that. That's the power of Excel. What if I said, oh, that flange is 12 inches wide, it's not 14? You'd have to redo all of that, right? It, not in Excel, just hit the button and there it goes. That's the whole point, okay? Make sense? All right, you all work on that. We'll pick this up next week. That's all I got. You all have a good weekend. Next week uh, after we finish this, which this will be real quick, we'll do some deck casting stuff and then we'll get into shear. All right, that's all I got.